Okay, welcome back to the video. In the last video, we brought the Aero Freighter from the point where we were right out here at Neptune, not too far from Triton. And we brought the Aero Freighter all the way over to Triton and got ourselves into orbit. Everything went pretty well. And the Delta V cost of getting the Aero Freighter into orbit around Triton was quite reasonable in my opinion. It was a single burn solution and that's important, that's an important distinction uh, between a single burn solution and a two burn solution and it's also perhaps important that I use just Transex. If you use you know a combination of MFDs, Transex, IMFD, then you might be able to come up with a, a better solution of some kind, but if you use just Transex and you use just a single burn solution then I don't think you would really be able to come up with anything that would be significantly cheaper. Of course, you might be able to cut a couple meters here and there, but I don't think you'd be able to come up with something too much cheaper. Who knows? Prove me wrong. Okay, let's uh, control P to unpause. And it actually occurred to me, I have never landed the Aero Freighter. In fact, this is the first time I've ever even used the Aero Freighter to any great degree. I've taken a look at it before, played around with it, very briefly, but I've never spent any time with it like this. So I really don't even have any idea how to land this thing. So this is sort of transitioning into a learn with me. Although I see there's an auto land here. I don't know, I'm guessing we can figure it out. I know that there is a system in this Aero freighter where you can actually put a probe at the point where you want to land and it will go directly to that probe and land itself like 100% automated but I really don't know how any of that works so I don't think I'm gonna even try that so let's do this let's bring up comnav And for Spaceport, I'm going to come down to uh, Triton Beach. And we want the long range first, so that's going to be 11630. And we don't even really need a landing pad because we're not going to, we're not going to land on a landing pad. The Aerofreighter is too big. I gotta think about how I'm going to do this. Okay, if we use the main engines to bring ourselves to a near dead stop, then we need 45 kilometers to do that. One option would be to come over top the base, well actually go all the way around to the other side and then bring our periapsis down so that by the time we got over top of the base we would be at an orbital, al orbital altitude of just two or three kilometers. That might save a little bit of hover. Of course the idea of saving fuel while using the aero freighter is kind of ridiculous because you have so much fuel. But nevertheless it's always good to be fuel conscious. Um, I just don't think it would really be worth, you know, doing that. I think I would actually rather have the additional hover time since I'm brand new to this vessel. Okay, so roughly 46, 47 kilometers will start the burn. I don't really think I need orbit MFD for anything. Bring up base sync for a moment though. Closest passage, target Triton Beach. Direct. Translation. Rotation. 
Let's go retrograde. Translation. Rotation. Translation. And with a little bit of translation, <clears throat> can correct that off base distance. And we want to get ourselves pretty close. Let's go with that. I can see it's counting down a little bit, so put it on one orbit just to have less confusion. Turn off the graphic. Rotation. And let's be level. If I don't get this right, try not to laugh too much. I have, again, never, ever, ever landed the Aero Freighter, not even once, not even in playing around. Yeah, I think I'll have better luck if I use this view. I do like this virtual cockpit, though. It's really... It's a good virtual cockpit. And I kind of hate virtual cockpits, actually. I just... In most ships, I don't like them at all. Translation. Rotation. Alright. I'm just thinking. I Obviously, I could time warp here and everything. I'm just thinking about stuff. Making sure that the target is Triton Beach. I've said this in quite a few videos. I don't know why this happens, but it happens in base sync and aero break. The target every now and then just stops saying that you're targeting the place that you want to target. Instead, it says target surface. Now, when that happens, I, st I know that I'm still targeting the right thing but it's still annoying because every now and then you might forget to target the place that you want to target and it'll say target surface and then when you and then you so you think you're lined up but you're not and then it, and you, you think oh well it just reset and it says target surface but I'm really targeting the right thing so that's why no matter what I always go ahead and reset this and make sure it's targeting the right thing it's just one of those annoying little quirks with this MFD. Aerobrake does the same thing. And we can see a little bit of a glow around the horizon there. Very subtle. I, I read on Wikipedia that the Triton has an atmosphere. It's like one seventy thousandth the atmosphere of Earth. So it's obviously nothing to concern yourself with, but it does have some some amount of gases down there. <clears throat> okay, I think I have a pretty good idea what I'm going to do, so let's go ahead and warp time ahead. Get closer to the base. <clears throat> and let me bring up VOR over here so I can watch my vertical speed. So again, we're going to go to about 40 seven kilometers okay 
getting close. Let's go level. Yikes, that takes longer than I thought it would. It's a good thing I started it early. Okay, gonna burn here, 48. And starting the burn. base down there below us. And we're all the way up to 43 kilometers, almost 44 kilometers. So I'm just going to let the vessel free fall for a while. Translation. Rotation. Rotation. Translation. Rotation. And we're basically straight over top of the base and falling straight down. Going to want to be a few hundred, a few hundred meters off from the center. Because again, we can't land on a landing pad, and we don't want to land on top of the uh, on top of the radio beacon, so we don't want to bring our distance down to zero. So probably maybe 400 meters, something like that. And I'm going to add in some hover just to get rid of some of this vertical speed just to get an idea how, how much hover I'm going to need when it comes time. It's not slowing things down as fast as I would expect so it's a good thing I tested the hover up here. Rotation. Translation. Rotation. And I'm going to put the landing skids down. See them coming out. Okay, we're on track pretty well, I would say. Translation. Yeah, I'm at maximum hover and it's slowing down 
slowing down rather slowly, so it's definitely a good thing that I started eliminating that vertical speed as high as I did. I wouldn't have expected it would take that long. Okay, I'm going to start reducing hover. I don't want to climb. Rotation. Translation. And we'll go with that as far as our distance. I Again, I don't want to be too close to the landing pads and radio beacon. Okay, well, I'm guessing I can hit auto land at this point. Take that back because it added in main engine for some reason. Rotation. Translation. I'm guessing it was targeting the radio beacon or something. I don't know what it was doing. Adding in hover to offset the descent. kilometers up. Yeah, I don't know how the autopilot or how the auto land decides where it's going to land. Probably something over here. I'll have to figure it out later. I don't know. Rotation. Okay, suddenly I'm very concerned about my vertical speed. I'm only at seven kilometers. Translation. That silly auto land screwed me up. Oh my gosh, that sucks. I'm gonna hit the ground too hard. I suppose I could go to full main engine and get back in orbit. I don't think I'm gonna slow down enough in time. Oh my 
I don't have enough time to do what I'm thinking. You are clear to land. Translation, rotation. 2,500. Using the main engines to slow myself down. I'm actually going to climb a little bit. So there's my hover engine, the main engine. Okay. Translation, rotation. Now let's get back to level quickly. Obviously doing that little maneuver set my off base distance, uh, or at least it, it moved me off from where I wanted to be, so I'm going to have to back up, but I was able to save the vessel by doing that. So note to self, don't use the... Translation. Rotation. Don't try to use the auto land unless you know exactly what you're doing. Getting rid of some hover. Translation. Okay, try to get back on track to get over to the base. Rotation. A little bit of excitement there, but we're okay. Adding in a little more reverse engine to get over to the base quicker because I'm seven kilometers out and then I'll use the main engine when I get closer okay I'm gonna start adding in a little more hover get a nice slow descent this time Okay, adding in just a touch more hover. A little more reverse because we got a ton of main engine braking. A little bit of time warp. Translation. Okay, there we have our 300 meters again. Adding in a bit more hover. Rotation. Okay, let's get rotated. Translation. <coughs> Go 
cycling full power on the hover. Rotation. Translation. Oops, I'm trying to bring myself closer to the base. I don't want to do that. There we go. Okay, now our vertical speed is under control. Can eliminate just a tad of hover. But not too much because this vessel is apparently very massive and heavy and wants to fall fast. Two thousand five hundred. Okay, this is a good descent rate now with translation. I can just use a little bit of eight and two to speed up or slow down the descent. Okay, we're on track. I think we're all set 220 meters out from the center of the base. And we're two kilometers high, falling at a controllable amount. In fact, I'll take away just a touch of hover for a moment, get down a little quicker. Rotation, translation. Where distance is almost back to 300, somewhere between 3 and 400, I think, should get me far enough away from the landing pads and all the structures. And I think I'm actually going to rotate some kind of sideways. Just putting in a touch of translation for the vertical speed, just to make sure it's under rotation. control. Still looks good. As soon as I'm rotated, I'm going to get rid of the horizontal speed. Translation. Rotation. Okay, that basically gets rid of all the horizontal speed. So now we just have another thousand meters to fall here and then we'll be on the ground. Go ahead and time warp that. here a little bit. Five hundred, four hundred. Okay. Touch of translation for the vertical speed. Touch of translation for horizontal. And here we are. Rotation. Translation. Touch a translation for 
horizontal speed. Two hundred. Rotation translation. And we're almost down. And it looks like 320 or thereabout is a good number for being away from the from the base. Touch a translation for the vertical speed. 100. Touch of translation for the horizontal speed. Touch a translation for vertical speed. Translating the horizontal speed. Forty. Thirty. Okay, touch of translation for vertical speed. You can hear the call outs. We're at thirty meters above the ground, that's referencing the landing skids 20. 20 meters above the ground. Touch of translation for the horizontal speed. 10. Touch of translation 10. for vertical, 10 meters up. We'll have a nice soft touch down here. Touch of translation for vertical. Touch a translation for horizontal. Contact. And there we are. Let's kill the hover. I was expecting call outs there Confirm. beyond 10, maybe 5, 4, but I didn't get any. Okay, let's turn off the horizontal level. Things are dancing around here, I'm not quite sure why. I guess. Rotation. Translation. Road translation. Just eliminating the horizontal that I'm seeing here. Rotate translation. Okay. It's a bit odd. Rotation. Translation. I don't know, sometimes these vessels do really weird things. Right now the whole vessel's doing jumping jacks. Rotation. Translation. Everything's off, so I don't know why this is happening. I 
okay, whatever, we're stabilized now. I guess I still had something enabled that was making the vessel want to fire some thrusters or something. I don't know, whatever, we're settled now, so that's going to wrap it up for this video, this whole grand tour. I hope you enjoyed the trip all the way from Earth to Jupiter, slinging past Saturn, slinging past Uranus, coming out here to Neptune, and making our way to Triton, and landing here on the moon. Ran into some trouble here toward the end, but we didn't crash. For some reason, turning on the Aero Freighters auto land completely disabled all the hover that I had, so I was falling rather quickly. So I had to do an emergency maneuver to rotate the Aero Freighter on its tail and use the main engines to prevent myself from cratering. But we got that taken care of. And there at the end it was kind of doing some jumping jacks and who knows why that is. So let's take one look here at burn time calculator. We can see we've got 70 kilometers, almost 71 kilometers worth of main fuel left. So we only used, <clears throat> I think we started with 96. So that's quite a bit of fuel to use, but nevertheless, I feel pretty comfortable with this mission, the way it was done overall using just Transex, you know, not combining IMFD for a better outcome. You know, I think it went pretty well. And obviously we've got plenty of oxygen left and we still have oxygen here in the cargo. So, I press control S just to save the vessel here at its destination at the end of this mission. And that's going to wrap it up. If you liked the Grand Tour, I'd appreciate if you left some kind of comment down below. And that's going to be it. I'll see you in the next video. If I don't get this right, try not to laugh too much. I have, again, never, ever, ever landed the Aero Freighter, not even once. Not even in playing around. Yeah, I think I'll have better luck if I use this view. I do like this virtual cockpit, though. It's really... It's a good virtual cockpit. And I kind of hate virtual cockpits, actually. I just... In most ships, I don't like them at all. Translation. Rotation. Alright. I'm just thinking. I Obviously, I could time warp here and everything. I'm just thinking about stuff. Making sure that the target is... Okay, welcome back to the video. In the last video, we brought the Aero Freighter from the point where we were right out here at Neptune, not too far from Triton. And we brought the Aero Freighter all the way over to Triton and got ourselves into orbit. Everything went pretty well and the Delta V cost of getting the Aero Freighter into orbit around Triton was quite reasonable in my opinion. It was a single burn solution and that's important. That's an important distinction uh, between a single burn solution and a two burn solution. 
And it's also perhaps important that I use just Transex. If you use, you know, a combination of MFDs, Transex, IMFD, then you might be able to come up with a, a better solution of some kind. But if you use just Transex and you use just a single burn solution, then I don't think you would really be able to come up with anything that would be significantly cheaper. Of course, you might be able to cut a couple meters here and there, but I don't think you'd be able to come up with something too much cheaper. Who knows? Prove me wrong. Okay, let's uh, control P to unpause. And it actually occurred to me, I have never landed the Aero Freighter. In fact, this is the first time I've ever even used the Aero Freighter to any great degree. I've taken a look at it before, played around with it. Kilometers will start the burn. Don't really think I need orbit MFD for anything. Bring up base sync for a moment though. Closest passage. Target Triton Beach. Direct. Translation. Rotation. Let's go retrograde. Translation. Rotation. Translation. And with a little bit of translation, <clears throat> can correct that off base distance. And we want to get ourselves pretty close. go with that. I can see it's counting down a little bit, so put it on one orbit just to have less confusion. Turn off the graphic. Rotation. And let's be level. I gotta think about how I'm going to do this. Okay, if we use the main engines to bring ourselves to a near dead stop, then we need 45 kilometers to do that. One option would be to come over top the base, well actually go all the way around to the other side and then bring our periapsis down so that by the time we got over top of the base we would be at an orbital, al orbital altitude of just two or three kilometers. That might save a little bit of hover. Of course the idea of saving fuel while using the aero freighter is kind of ridiculous because you have so much fuel, but nevertheless it's always good to be fuel conscious. Um, I just don't think it would really be worth, you know, doing that. I think I would actually rather have the additional hover time since I'm brand new to this vessel. Okay, so roughly 46, 47, very briefly, but I've never spent any time with it like this. So I really don't even have any idea how to land this thing. So this is sort of transitioning into a learn with me. Although I see there's an auto land here. I don't know, I'm guessing we can figure it out. I know that there is a system in this aero freighter where you can actually put a probe at the point where you want to land and it will go directly to that probe and land itself like 100% automated but I really don't know how any of that works so I don't think I'm gonna even try that so let's do this let's bring up comnav and for spaceport I'm gonna come down to 
uh, Triton Beach. And we want the long range first, so that's going to be 11630. <laughs> And we don't even really need a landing pad because we're not going to we're not going to land on a landing pad. The aerofreighter is too big. <laughs> 